Thanks Thank be to God. Today's scripture is likely familiar to many of you. It's a rather comforting text in which Paul writes to the early Christian people in Rome, assuring them that God is with them. Even in the midst of hardship, struggle, and pain, God never gives up. God never lets go. Hear these words again. No, in all, in all these things we are more than conquerors, through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I ask you, what is it that can separate us from Christ's love. Nothing. You see, Paul is writing in anticipation of an upcoming journey that he will, that will ultimately lead him to Rome and the people to which he is writing. He does not yet know him, yet he has a very important thing to tell them. At this point in time, the Roman population is, is growing, and it's growing increasingly diverse largely a result of many political victories and government takeovers in recent years. Christians, and particularly the Gentile Christians, were a minority among this, this diverse population, often seen as outsiders, as rule breakers, as troublemakers by the Roman officials. And adding to that, there were disagreements among the, between the Jewish and the Gentile Christians that had forced the Gentiles from their meeting places in synagogues to homes around the city. As Paul composes this pastoral message about strength that is found in Christ, we must remember today that being conquered is a tangible reality for the Roman Christians who refused to compromise their religious beliefs and obedience to Roman law. You see, to conquer is to take over by force, to subdue, to bring into bondage, to disregard, to control. This was their reality. This was the life that they lived. And so I think it's safe that we can assume that Paul was writing to early Christians who feared for their lives. And they had every reason to. They were not welcome in Rome, and they were being forced to conform or assimilate, if you will, to the Roman lifestyle set forth by the elite and the ruling officials, those that had the power. And still, even in the midst of what I imagine was tremendous fear, Paul reassures them that this is not the end. They are more than the conquerors, he writes. They are more than the things that try to hold them down. As I prepared for today's sermon, reflecting upon Paul's letter to the Romans, I pondered the things that I see attempting to conquer us in our world today. Things that distance us, things that separate us from the love of God. As I did this, I struggled, as I'm sure many of you have too, to keep my own life intact this week. To be honest, there were times when I felt like I was being conquered myself. How was I ever going to make it through the day? And then on Friday evening, as I was running errands with my fiance, Victoria, Paul's words became all too real as my Facebook feed on my phone filled with messages of, of healing and of fear for the people in Paris. Like many of you, I cannot begin to understand the magnitude of Friday's attacks. I still don't know that I have fully wrapped my mind around all that happened. And so I stand before you today with many shared emotions, helplessness, 
confusion, pain, frustration, and fear, hoping that we can move forward through this and walk through this journey together. As I sit with all that's happened in the past 48 hours, my prayers and thoughts are not only with Paris, but for the entire world. And my mind begins to race across the globe to all that have, at some point, been faced with oppressive power forced upon them by their conquerors. This past weekend, I attended Exploration 2015, a biannual event for young people discerning a call to ordained ministry in the United Methodist Church. I attended this as a seminary representative from the seminary that I attend, Methodist Theological School in Ohio. The event, a powerful weekend of worship and of small group conversa conversation, culminated with a Sunday morning worship service led by Bishop Minerva Carcano, who is the current bishop in the California Pacific Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. In her ministry, Bishop Carcano has spent a great deal of time advocating for immigration reform on behalf of the denomination. And so her sermon featured stories from her experience with this ministry. One story that she told that greatly impacted me was the story of a young boy who had been sent by his family across the border from Honduras in hopes that he might find a better life here in the United States. The boy was discovered by a couple at their home in Texas, but it was too late. The boy died in their yard before they could get help. The couple called border control, and when the officials arrived, they saw the boy's body, and, and she said that they, they dropped to their knees and they wept. The officers removed the boy's clothes to find any sign of identification, and behind his belt buckle, they found a card that said who he was, where he was from, who he belonged to, and where he was going. Now, Bishop Carcano finished this story by saying that although she knew that he likely died of hunger or dehydration. She also wondered that maybe, maybe he died of a broken heart, separated and alone from those who loved him most. She went on to explain this to the students that, that while in this ministry, she has met people in this denomination who, who are working tirelessly for, for children and families immigrants who are just looking for basic needs. But she said that she, in this work, has also met people who, who would look at this boy, who would hear this story and say, let him die. He does not belong here. Just let him die. Friends, I stand before you today and ask, who is it in our communities, in our in our neighborhoods, in our cities, who is it that we are letting die? Friends, it seems to me that contemporary Ameri American culture is not that much different from that of ancient Rome. And because of this, we are, we are left with a mess that has polarized us from one another, from creation, and from God. We, like those in Rome, we, like those in Rome, we live in a society that often encourages and even celebrates those that conquer. We live in a society where in order to succeed, one must do as the conquerors do. Take over and defeat without regard for the other is the only way that we excel and get what we want. And isn't that our reason for being? To get what we want? We are taught that to conquer we are taught to conquer those that conquer us. Fight fire with fire, they say. And so we have, been give, we have given in, we are gaining power, and we are gaining privilege through the conquering of people, of communities, and of cultures for our own self-interest and preservation. 
Look around you and see what the conquering has done. As Paul reminds us earlier in his letter, creation is groaning for those who have, because of those who have conquered it and waits expectantly for the renewal and salvation from this pain. Friends, our world is crying out for help. How will you respond? What will you do? What have you or who have you unknowingly conquered for the sake of personal gain? Friends, this is how we live out our faith as a reflection of the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. I stand before you today to remind you that um, that we are more than conquerors, just as Paul reminds the Romans. We are more than conquerors. We are loved by a God who is so much bigger than those who try to hold us down. And because of that, we have a responsibility to protect, protect people from the conquerors, the conquerors that, that attempt to subdue them, to hold them down physically, spiritually, or emotionally. We cannot, no, we must not let them die. Throughout Scripture, time and time again, we see God's faith, faithful people faced with challenges. But in the end, as you know, love always wins. Paul reminds the Christian community in Rome that it is Christ who died so that they might have life and victory over those that conquer them. No longer do they need to be burdened by those that seek to define them. They are more. Friends, as I look out at you today, I realize that there are those of you among us who have faced your fair share of conquerors. You have struggled with them, and many of you, by, by various means, have defeated them. Because you have stared in the face of conquerors who have attempted to hold you down because of your age, because of your gender, because of what you look like, where you come from, or who it is that you love, and because you have experienced the loving grace of God through Jesus Christ, you are stronger and equipped to stand with the victimized, the oppressed, and those that live in fear. Because you have been conquered, you are prepared to hold them, to care for them, to love them, to show them a different way. A way out of death, a way out of darkness, a way that leads to life everlasting. It is only when we know what it is like to be conquered and understand how much that it really hurts that we can stand in solidarity with those who are suffering and effectively work towards the flourishing of creation and all of human life. As you are aware, we are just two weeks away from the start of the Advent season, a time in which we pause to remember that God sent Jesus into this world not as a conqueror, but as a baby, as a baby born into the lowliest conditions, who would end up showing us grace and love that leads to life. Jesus, the one that we call Messiah, does not change this world by conquering people with force, but fulfills God's mission through love, life, and ministry with the people. By showing us what love looks like in public, Jesus rescues the oppressed, cares for the needy, defends the afflicted, and saves us from violence and death. Friends, Jesus is a different kind of king. God did not send Jesus into this world as a powerful ruler with a crown upon his head, born among the noble elite. No, God sent Jesus into this world in the same state as you and me, vulnerable, susceptible to the conquerors and the hardships of life. You see, because of his humanity, because of his life on earth, Jesus hears us in our peril and in our pain. 
throughout his life, Jesus resides with the oppressed and the ones that society has, has forgotten. Because of this relational way of living, Jesus is able to stand in solidarity with the oppressed and challenge those systems that dominate and rule. Because Jesus knew what it was like to be conquered, and because he sees others who have been conquered, and because he is ultimately conquered himself, which we know is not defeat, but is the ultimate victory, for refusing to back down to those systems of dominance and those that did not agree with him. Not only does he hear creation's cries, but he rescues them too. Friends, today I am reminded of a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., which I, which, with which I'm sure many of you are familiar. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Friends, against the forces of darkness and terror, love and compassion will always prevail. While Rome gained power through force, Paul reminds us that this is not the way that ultimately leads to life. Life comes from Christ who showed us love. I close today with a quote from a graphic that has been making its way around the internet over the past few days since, since Friday. It reads, It is not Paris that we should pray for. It is the world. It is a world in which Beirut, reeling from bombings two days before Paris, is not covered in the press. A world in which a bomb goes off at a funeral in Baghdad and not one, pers one person's status update says Baghdad because not one white person died in that fire. Pray for a world that blames a refugee crisis for a terrorist attack. That does not pause to differentiate between the attacker and the person running from the very same thing you are. Pray for a world where people walking across countries for months, their only belongings upon their backs, are told that they have no place to go. Say a prayer for Paris by all means, but pray for more. For a world that does not have a prayer for those who no longer have a home to defend. For a world that is falling apart, that is falling apart in all corners, and not simply in the towers and cafes we find so familiar. Friends, as we pray for those who have, been conquer who have conquered this world, we, we also as we pray for those who, who have been conquered in this world, we also pray for the conquerors. Pray for them too. Remember that you are the children of God, created for love and for life. Aware that you are more than those that attempt to conquer you, more than those that hold you down. Because of Jesus Christ, we know that we need not fear. For God is with us through all of our trials and our pain. Always, we are more. Together, we are more. Amen.